At E3 2018, CD Projekt Red released their trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 and hosted a gameplay demo behind closed doors, which was later revealed to be powered by a GTX 1080 Ti. Four years ago, they employed a similar campaign of trailers and gameplay demos to show off their then-upcoming title, The Witcher 3. With each subsequent release of footage, however, fans began to notice the game looking discernibly worse. The Witcher 3 launched in 2015 to critical acclaim. However, discontent was brewing in the PC community over the game's visuals, specifically about how they paled in comparison to the game's earliest trailers. This did not come as a surprise, as many noted the game looking worse with every subsequent trailer the developers released in the months leading up to the game's launch. The developers, for their part, repeatedly denied any mention of a downgrade right up to the day of release. We are not downgrading it. Uh, we are optimizing the game, but in a way that um, doesn't affect the visuals. No, okay, we didn't. We didn't downgrade it. It's, yeah. We didn't. We didn't downgrade. <laughs> because we, it's okay. It's, it's impossible. It was these assurances that many of their loyal fans placed their faith in. A faith that ultimately turned out to be misplaced. Since the game's launch, several comparison videos were made of the visuals and the degradation was all but undeniable. This is not to say The Witcher 3 is not a beautiful game in its current form. Indeed, it is still a very good looking game, but it used to look even better. And that's the rub. Fast forward to 2018, it's been 17 months since Witcher 3 received its final patch on PC, version 1.31. The game can be reasonably assumed to have reached the end of its development cycle. We can now analyse the downgrade with the benefit of hindsight and examine what, if anything, CD Projekt Red has since done to make up for it. Let's start from the beginning by looking at the trailers that set expectations so high in the first place. All trailers and gameplay footage have been obtained from Gamerside.com in their uncompressed form. The first video we'll be analysing is the E3 debut gameplay trailer, screened in June 2013. This trailer can be problematic as it intersperses gameplay with pre-rendered footage from the Killing Monsters cinematic. However, it is easy to spot if you know what to look for, and even if you don't, we will throw up a visual indicator when we get to the cinematic part. Six months into the invasion, Nilfgaard's legions had pierced the heart of the northern realms. Behind them, blood-soaked fields, war-swept wastes. A lone wolf roamed these broken lands, a beast slayer, a whirlwind of rage and steel. They say he was a man obsessed, chasing memories, faces, scents. Yet amidst the chaos, he could only follow his heart. Some fight for glory, justice, or gold. I fight for those I hold dear. I'm Geralt of Rivia, the Witcher. That was a thing of beauty. But let's look at it again, this time in slow motion. Right off the bat, we see volumetric clouds everywhere, drifting over to the center from the right, forming over the mountain slopes on the left. We even see one of the darker clouds obscure some of the sunlight, leaving beautiful god rays to shine through. Now we switch to our hero riding his horse, and even though the camera is moving quickly, we can see the vegetation is really diverse in its models and colours. Next, we have the burning village scene, with some of the best fire and smoke effects seen to date. This is CGI. Moving on. Back to game footage. We see the fire here is not as impressive as the burning village scene shown earlier, though that could be because it's not the primary light source in daylight. This aerial shot features incredible draw distances, with no compromise on the level of detail on even the most distant structures. Our hero returns to the burning village. Notice how the fire blends into the volumetric smoke, making the plume glow. We move on to Novigrad, another famous portion of the trailer. Let's pause it to examine the frame in detail. The image is so sharp that we can clearly discern the tiles on even the most distant towers. The colours are a bit desaturated though, which may not be to everyone's taste. 
Moving on, the water effects are spectacular, though we don't get to see them for very long. The trailer displays an incredible variety of foliage in the next few scenes. The colours, textures and models of vegetation showed remarkable diversity, and this extends to the terrain as well. That ends the first trailer, which was groundbreaking for its time. CD Projekt Red played it safe by not specifying whether the trailer was in-game footage, though they did name it the game's debut gameplay trailer. They weren't quite as cautious with their next trailer, which they showed at VGX in December 2013. As you can see, the trailer clearly mentions it is in-game footage. Let's watch it now. We have been here before. We watch your petty world slumbering. You cannot defy the call of the mass deal. You can only surrender. I saw a long ship made of the claws of dead men. The rates drove everyone to the shore. My daughter too. No man who meets the hunt returns to this world. I returned. Let's look at it again, this time in slow motion. The trailer opens by reusing the burning village scene from the last debut gameplay trailer. We then see some new footage of the Wild Hunt walking amidst the inferno. The fire here is not nearly as impressive without the volumetric smoke and the flames do look somewhat flatter and more two-dimensional. The textures and tessellation on the Wild Hunt's armour is impressive though. Moving on to Geralt riding his horse. Take a look at that skybox, it is gorgeous thanks to its clouds showing incredible variants in formations, colours and lighting. The volumetric smoke spewing from the two chimneys also deserves a mention, and the extreme draw distances keep the distant river and mountains visible. Moving on, this aerial shot of Novigrad contains no less than 15 instances of chimneys spewing volumetric smoke. I'd sound like a broken record if I fawned over the drawn distances again, but it would be criminal negligence if I didn't. Special mention has to be made about the sharpness of the image, the level of detail and the vibrant colour palette. One month after releasing this trailer, CD Projekt Red's co-founder gave an interview to IGN in which he stated they were looking to release the Red Kit sometime after the game launches for the modding community, adding, People can create their own adventures and this will inevitably add a lot of fun and replayability to the game. Ultimately though, this was not to be, but more on that later. CD Projekt Red released the next trailer, The Sword of Destiny, in June 2014. Let's watch it now. No. Once we were many, now we are few. Hunters, killers of the world's filth, witchers, the ultimate killing machines. Among us, a legend, the one they call Geralt of Rivia, the White Wolf. We meet again, Witcher. Your Imperial Majesty. She's returned, Geralt. After all these years. Are you sure it's her? Yes. And she's in danger. Witnesses claim the Wild Hunt follows her. You must find her. And when I do, what then? I shall give her what she deserves. You have 
probably noticed the trailer reuses several scenes from earlier trailers, such as the burning village scene, the wild hunt walking through said burning village and the aerial shot of Novigrad, which could indicate that said scenes were representative of the game's visuals at this point in development. That being said, most of the trailer showcased new footage, so let's have another look at it, this time in slow motion. The trailer opens with a short, nighttime shot of the hanged man's tree. The lighting and clouds are striking in their quality. Even at night, they display impressive detail and variety in colours, layers and brightness. The next scene brings us to a group of horsemen riding down a road. The foliage here looks notably simpler than we've seen in previous trailers. This also applies to the next scene where we see soldiers walking through a dimly lit forest. The vegetation regains its fidelity in this third scene, which also showcases volumetric fog blanketing the forest in the distance. The courtroom scene features impressive lighting and fire effects. Note how the flame spirals as it ascends the torch. The next scene appears to have been edited with post-process filters, and I'm not a fan of the bloom. Also, the textures on the tree to the left look rather warped. Here's the aerial view of Novigrad reused from 2013's VGX trailer. There's little more to be analysed in this trailer, so let's move on. At the same event, CD Projekt Red demonstrated a gameplay sequence at the Microsoft press conference. You probably noticed the quality is terrible and thus unsuitable for any analysis. Try as we might, the best we found was a 720p video. Even through the awful quality, clouds in the sky appear as good as in any trailer we've seen up to this point. This is important as the video spends a great deal of time looking up at the sky as Geralt battles an aerial enemy. What makes this demo worth mentioning is that we see a developer on the stage play the game with a controller and the game running on the Xbox One. This will become important later. In August 2014, two months after the Xbox One demo, CD Projekt Red released another gameplay sequence titled Down Warren, this time captured on the PC build. Right away you can see the vegetation has been significantly simplified, with the same two or three plant models being repeated across the terrain. The leaves on the tree branches also look rather clumpy in a way that wasn't seen in earlier trailers. The textures on the terrain don't hold up to earlier footage either. We see the repetition in foliage models continue as Geralt heads down into the swamp, though this is somewhat mitigated by the water and variance in tree models. The clouds don't appear to have changed, in what little we see of them. One week later, a 35-minute gameplay demo is released that begins with a stroll through Novigrad. This is a more comprehensive playthrough of the same mission previewed in the previous two demos. This sequence is far too long for us to cover in its entirety, but we can compare it to how the same location looks in the final build of the game. On the left is a demo from 2014, on the right is the same route captured from the Game of the Year edition under identical weather conditions. You should immediately notice a striking difference in the sky, which had a much deeper, richer shade of blue in the 2014 video. The clouds on the left have far greater depth, dimension and variety in shapes, colours, levels of transparency and brightness. The wall on the right appears significantly less tessellated next to the 2014 footage. Overall, the final product looks considerably more dull and less vibrant than the 2014 demo. To be fair, we did not have the final product to compare the sequence to when it was shown in August of 2014. That being said, the Novigrad shown in the demo looks remarkably different from the aerial shot of the city shown in the Sword of Destiny trailer, released just two months prior. Volumetric smoke saw perhaps the greatest change between the two. Chimney smoke is far more scarce in the 35 minute demo and appears significantly toned down compared to the aerial view in the Sword of Destiny which featured several prominent plumes of smoke that were thick enough to be easily spotted from across the city. That begs the question, did Novigrad still look like that aerial shot at the time the Sword of Destiny was shown? The most likely answer is no, as the aerial view was reused from the VGX trailer first shown in December 2013. CD Projekt Red later admitted, after the game's 2015 release, that the rendering system after VGX was changed. So why was the aerial shot from VGX reused in 2014 Sword of Destiny, when its visuals were no longer representative of the game at that point? Presumably because the differences were minor enough that most watching wouldn't notice. That wasn't the case with their next gameplay trailer, Elder Blood, released in December of 2014. Everybody noticed the degradation in quality of everything from textures to terrain to particle effects. 
the uproar became so heated that the developer released a statement in an attempt to defuse the situation, stating, We have encountered some horrible YouTube compression problems. He then assured readers that there will be no downgrade. That was a bold-faced lie. We have seen and used the uncompressed version of the Elder Blood trailer in the production of this analysis and the downgrade is clear as day. Still, many fans chose to cling on to CD Projekt Red's claims, despite visual evidence mounting to the contrary. Keep in mind, this was the year of Watch Dogs, a game that brought downgrading to the forefront. Indeed, Watch Dogs was eviscerated for the degeneration in lighting, textures and particle effects, even though modders were able to retrieve many of the aforementioned effects from the game files and activate them in-game. CD Projekt Red were banking on the impeccable record they had maintained to push this lie, continuing to deny the downgrade right up until the game's release. Less than a week before The Witcher 3's launch date, a visual effects artist gave an interview in which he emphatically rejected any mention of a downgrade. About that no, moment. I mean, no, okay, we didn't, we didn't downgrade it, I mean, it's, yeah. we didn't, we didn't downgrade, we didn't, because we, it's, okay, it's, it's impossible, it's impossible to downgrade a game that didn't exist before or wasn't playable before. So why did the trailer say in-game footage? There was no grade, no grade to downgrade, so yeah. there's, he was comparing, he's comparing a final product with a product that wasn't playable, that wasn't a game yet, so... Is mistake. There are two things that people have to separate. This mm -hmm. downgrade is downgrade and optimization. Optimization is necessary to make the game run. Mm -hmm. uh, downgrade is when you, you know, if you deliberately make the game worse uh, for some for whatever reason to make the game run. I mean, that's not that's totally not what happened. And Notice how he stops his dichotomy between downgrade and optimization mid sentence. He probably realized that he admitted that they did both downgraded the visuals in the process of optimizing the game. Optimal optimization improves game performance while preserving visual fidelity, which is not what happened here. It's very unfair to compare uh, trailers and gameplay demos. Very well. Our analysis compared the 2014 gameplay demo to the final product, and the downgrade in lighting and cloud quality is immediately apparent. A trailer is the trailer is a beautiful shot, right? The trailer is this prepared, you take one location, you put the perfect lights and the perfect camera angle and the perfect center and it looks absolutely beautiful and it's captured that super high definition and then you post-process it in a video. So the game didn't look like that in motion even back in 2013? So why did you call it a gameplay trailer then? Why didn't you just call it a trailer? If it was that extensively edited, you could have avoided a lot of trouble by calling it a cinematic trailer, like you did with Killing Monsters. Nobody expected the game to look like the visuals in Killing Monsters. Gameplay demos, that's when, the, that's when you see the real game. That's when you see you know, what the real game looks like. Yeah, we compared the 2014 game demo to the real game, and the final product looks discernibly worse. Since you insist, We'll take another crack at the comparison with another section of the 2014 demo. Look at the sky, the clouds, the colours, the vegetation. The difference is striking. The game was downgraded after the gameplay demo. And we had, basically we had what? We had three or four videos, gameplay videos. We had one in 2013, which was a demo in Skellige, which was a really long time ago. And actually, uh, shortly after that demo, we completely, if you look at that demo, it, the graphics look totally different. They look uh, totally different because at the time we were using a very old shader system. It wasn't this physically based shader with all the reflections and the shiny metals and everything. It was a very, it was a little bit flatter. It was sharp, some, some things were very sharp, too sharp even. We had some problems with the vegetation that they had a, sharpen, a sharpening filter. That it didn't work. It's, after a while it would... Uh, it, it was uncomfortable for the eyes, it's very hard to describe, but it was yeah. when walking through the forest, sharp vegetation is terrible. So we changed the whole shader system. Why didn't you say so five months prior when people raised concerns about the Elder Blood trailer? Why did you blame it all on YouTube compression when you knew the shaders were completely revamped? Why did you pretend like nothing had changed? Fast forward one week to the game's release and gamers were finally able to play The Witcher 3 and compare the visuals to the trailer for themselves. CD Projekt Red could not deny the downgrade any longer and admitted in an interview that the rendering system after VGX was changed. 
There were two possible rendering systems, but one won out because it looked nicer across the whole world in daytime and at nighttime. When checking this fact, we came across a leaked NVIDIA presentation from E3 2013, six months prior to VGX. It clearly draws a comparison between old renderer and newer effects, implying the change of rendering system had already taken place before the game's very first reveal. CD Projekt Red went on to state that the billowing smoke and roaring fire from the 2013 trailers were removed because it was a global system and would have killed PC because of transparencies. This represents a fundamental shift in design principles from their previous game, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. The Witcher 2 featured a setting called Uber Sampling, which crippled performance when activated. Given that using it was impossibly impractical at the time of its release, did CD Projekt Red cut it out of the game? No. They left it in as they knew that with the passage of time, hardware would progress to the point of being able to use Uber Sampling whilst maintaining playable performance. They realised that Uber Sampling gave players a reason to return to The Witcher 2 years after its release, in effect giving the game greater longevity. Even so, Uber Sampling was still available in the game back in 2011. Something tells me Uber Sampling wouldn't be an option if The Witcher 2 were released today, or in 2015 for that matter. So why didn't CD Projekt Red continue that approach and keep those particle effects available for those who had the hardware to run it? We can see from the leaked NVIDIA presentation that even in 2013, these effects could be disabled at a whim. It could be argued that this effect has a far more profound impact on visuals than Uber Sampling did in The Witcher 2. Why couldn't soft particles be relegated to a separate graphics menu like in GTA 5? The menu option could have made it clear it would be extremely taxing to use. Why was it removed entirely? Many PC players speculated the limitations of console hardware was responsible for the downgrade, but CD Projekt Red's co-founder disagreed, stating, If the consoles are not involved, there is no Witcher 3 as it is. However, he went on to concede that developing only for the PC, yes, probably we could get more in terms of graphics as there would be nothing else. They would be so focused, like if we would develop only on Xbox One or the PlayStation 4. But then we cannot afford such a game. This is a poor excuse for settling on platform parity. Properly developed games don't let the limitations of one platform hinder the other. Take for example Battlefield 3, released in 2011 on the PC, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Despite being developed for last generation consoles, there was no compromise on graphical fidelity for the PC version. As a result, Battlefield 3 on the PC was way ahead of its time in terms of graphics and can even hold its own visually against titles released 6 or 7 years later. I am not sure The Witcher 3 will age quite that well. To demonstrate, let's compare Battlefield 3 to The Witcher 3. Battlefield 3 makes extensive use of volumetric clouds, the quality of which matches the clouds seen in the early Witcher 3 trailers. On certain maps such as Albor's Mountains, you can even fly through the clouds with a jet or a helicopter, and the clouds look as good up close as they do from the ground. This is important as you'll often fly into them breaking line of sight when fleeing from enemy aircraft. Volumetric clouds in The Witcher 3 were much scarcer than the trailers made it seem, only appearing in Kaya Morin. This matters as you'll often be fighting aerial enemies, during which you will spend a lot of time tracking them through the air. That's a lot of time you'll spend looking at the sky, which would have looked better with volumetric clouds like those seen in Battlefield 3. We knew the game was capable of that as we saw them in the trailers released in 2013. Regarding the 2013 trailers, CD Projekt Red's co-founder had this to say, if gamers made their purchasing decision based on 2013 materials, I'm deeply sorry for that and we are discussing how we can make it up to them because that's not fair. It's very important to stress we are continuously working on the PC version and we will be adding a lot of stuff and there is more to come. He went on to ask, You're saying that we should have said, Hey, we've changed stuff and now it looks like this. Yes, that is what you should have done when people noticed a change in the Elder Blood trailer in December 2014. He concluded the interview by reiterating, I definitely encourage them to wait and see what we will be releasing in patches, updates and whatnot. So what did they release in the months since? Not the red kit they promised. What gamers got instead was mod kit, which allowed users to manipulate the looks and feels of in-game objects, put new models into the world and fiddle with item statistics using scripting tools. Red kit was significantly more powerful than this, which led many to be disappointed with mod kit. When CD Projekt Red's community manager was asked if Red Kit was on the way after Modkit, 
He replied, referring to Modkit, This is the mod support for Wild Hunt. We are not planning to release anything else. For all the lies and broken promises, CD Projekt Red didn't face any consequences in the long run. They pushed out a string of free DLC and two excellent expansions which made any mention of the downgrade old news. Still, I held out hope that they might release an enhanced edition like they did for the first two Witches, and with it recapture some of that charm from the 2013 trailers. That's a pipe dream now as post-launch development seems to have concluded with the Game of the Year edition. Indeed, The Witcher 3 is unlikely to receive any further updates, with CD Projekt Red's focus now on Cyberpunk 2077. Speaking of which, what does this bode for Cyberpunk? There is no doubt it will be a fantastic game. Just keep in mind while you watch the trailers, what you see may not be what you get. Even if this is the case, CD Projekt Red will still be fine thanks to the goodwill they've built up over the years with their DRM-free game store, GOG. This is particularly important at a time when many publishers try to stack as many DRMs into games as they can in a misguided effort to stave off piracy. Our next videos will analyse the most notorious of these, Denuvo, exploring its history and testing its performance impact on several games that have removed it post-launch. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell button icon so you don't miss out. Until then, feel free to watch our previous videos which explore the history of loot boxes or analyse why games go politically correct.